is up guys? Welcome back. It is time for the end of the year roundup videos. This is number two of three. We started with best of the best skincare. Now we're doing honestly my personal favorite, which is my year end fails. <laughs> my regrets. I use the word regrets because it is an easy word that everybody understands what I'm talking about, but everybody knows on my channel. And if you're new here, I'll let you know. There's no such thing really as a regret on my channel because everything is information. Even if I don't like something, it's valuable to be able to tell you that I don't like it. You know, it's just, it's a review and that's what I live for. I have this box here in front of me and I've decluttered things that I didn't end up liking throughout this year. Yeah, throughout this year. And so I will go through the things here and let you guys know why I didn't like them. And then I'm gonna go through my video feed and just see if there are some things that I really feel like are worth calling out that I've already decluttered, that I just, you know, can't store in my brain memory anymore. And I just wanna have one little disclaimer here, and that is that I'm not saying necessarily that these are across the board, like horrible products. A couple of them are, but mostly it's just like this didn't meet my expectations for certain reasons and I don't recommend them. I take very seriously the responsibility of a person who is providing advice as to how you spend your dollars and my worst nightmare is you messaging me later and being like, hey, you gave this a good review. I spent my money on it and I hate it because you said something that wasn't true. <laughs> so I am always going to err on the side of being more cautious and only recommending products to you, couched in every single caveat of why I love it, and being a little harsher on products that I really feel like would have a higher degree of disappointment. That's all, if you love these products, then love the products. I am not trying to take that away from you in any way. Do not let my opinion sway you from loving the products that you love. These are just the ones that I personally wouldn't recommend if I were sitting down talking to a friend, recommending products for them for their specific needs. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. Can we talk about the cashmere? Ah, my mother-in-law got me this from Banana Republic and it's making me so happy. All right, so. Some of these things are going to be absolutely no surprise to you. We'll go ahead and kick it off with the ones that will be no surprise to you. These are two very disappointing eye glitters that I tried very recently. So the first one I didn't even make a video about and it is by a brand called Tude. I bought them on Credo. They're supposed to be very gentle, clean beauty products and they sting the heck out of my eyes. That is the reason that I didn't end up making a video about them. This is what this one looks like, I think this is Tiger Eye? J Jasper. Yeah, looks pretty enough, right? But it's really like a pretty unpleasant thing to apply. It looks kind of unattractive on the skin. Like it just kind of looks like um, craft store glitter. That was what I was looking for. And that is not what I want on my eyeballs. It distorts the light in an unflattering way and it makes my eyes sting. And it's very large, crunchy glitter that doesn't really wanna like dry down and stick. And it's very uncomfortable on your eyes. So yeah, I just feel like the different sizes and also the dispersion of the glitter not really having any unifying texture makes it like harder to work with and is worth it. And then the other one, I love that it like, I'm trying to apply it and it ends up mostly on my finger. And then the other one that I hope I can really save you some money and some effort with is the Valentino Dream Dust. It is squishy and weird, and I'm gonna get it under my finger now. <laughs> my nails are really, really long, and it is very equally disappointing. Just really unpleasant. It doesn't sting my eyes. It doesn't have any weird uh, you know, ingredients in it that bother me, but it still is just very difficult to use. It doesn't really wanna stick. And I'm sure that someone in some comment somewhere on the internet says like, well, you should probably be using like, you know, the Valentino brand glitter glue or something like that to make it work. I shouldn't have to do that. There are some really, really beautiful glitters out there on the market that I don't have to do that with. And we will talk about all of those in my year end best of the best favorites. I'm not going to like go down, if I can help it, I'm going to avoid the rabbit holes in this video, but these are both really, really disappointing, especially as someone who 
can usually find an upside in a glitter, right? I mean, glitter is meant to make you happy. There, it serves almost no other purpose. It's supposed to make you happy. And these glitters made me sad. And another one, as I'm kind of retracing my mental steps that I did not even realize was this year, but as I was looking through my old videos, it bears repeating and including in this little category were the EXA glitters that were also from Credo. EXA is Credo's house brand. I loved their foundation that they put out in 2020. It was actually, I think, my foundation of the year because it just really hit all the marks. But those EXA glitters were, they stung the living daylights out of my eyes and they were also difficult to work with and they just weren't that pretty, you know, for what they were. They were just basic craft store body glitters. Oh, oh yeah, now my entire life is going to be covered in glitter for the rest of the video. So glad that's what I chose to kick it off with. I never learn, do I? I wanna talk about something that I only touched on briefly and it was sort of in a first impressions. This is the Laura Mercier Celestial Light Translucent Loose Setting Powder in the Light Catcher variety. And I totally understand that this is supposed to be an illuminating powder and maybe I just don't love illuminating powders, but I just couldn't get this to work. Like, I love the Bio Brightener, the new one even, the reformulated one from Well People. I love it and I used it all over my face today and it has a really, really lovely effect both on camera and in person. This from Laura Mercier, I get what they were going for and see on camera it looks really pretty. In person it looks really surreal and weird. It looks icy and it does come in three shades. This one being the one that is supposed to work for me and it is a pleasant enough kind of beige. It's not silver, it's not blue, you know? But I couldn't really get it to work as a highlighter because it doesn't diffuse really beautifully on the skin. It kind of builds and grabs and it I would never use it as an all over the face powder. And so I actually really can't even speak to the Laura Mercier setting powder craze because this is the only one that I've ever tried, the only version that I've ever tried. And I really wanted to try something new for you guys in that video because I went shopping at Ulta to just, you know, see what was new. And this is just a whole but load of product that I'm just not really gonna get any use out of. I have some really beautiful highlighters and like I was thinking, well, regardless I'll be able to use this as a highlighter, it's really not very pretty as a highlighter either. So I don't know, it just kind of didn't, it didn't fall into a category that I could make it work. And for that reason, it's just kind of a pass. I wanna talk about Beauty Pie here because I have only reviewed Beauty Pie in sponsored videos and a lot of people have internalized distrust for sponsored videos because of the environment that was built early on in the beauty space on YouTube by certain creators who were willing to put their stamp of approval on products that they made work but didn't love as much as they actually said that they did because there was a, a large payout attached to it. Let me assure you, the payouts I'm getting for any of these things are, by most people's standards, modest, okay? And I would never agree to a video where I was literally lying. However, most of the time, those videos, I am only going to be talking about things that I absolutely love, basically. And so I did want to discuss a few of the things that I did end up passing on for the sake of transparency from Beauty Pie. Beauty Pie is membership-based and it does incentivize you to keep trying their products and I wanted to make sure that you guys get like a well-rounded idea of what I like and what I don't like because I'm the one who recommended it in the first place. So something that I did pass on from them is their new foundation. Not that I hate it or anything like that, it's just not for me. It's not something that I would recommend. It's a little bit too high coverage, it's a little bit too matte, and the colors are kind of funky. I just don't really, really like love this and I found it to be kind of difficult to work with. It just ended up giving me too much coverage and I think that I'm, the, it's just not for my skin type and also those are like the wrong colors, okay? And that is the lightest I think I wanna say, yeah. Super Light 50 and Fair 100 Ivory and they're both very incorrect in terms of a shade match for me and quite yellow. It, it just kind of was off for me in a lot of different ways and it just wasn't my style. And I communicated this to them already and everything, you know, they were like, hey, we welcome feedback, you know, let us know what you liked, what you didn't like kind of thing. And so none of this is a surprise to them, but it's called the Everyday Great Skin Foundation. It's made in Italy. They put all of their, you know, 
effort and R&D and everything into making these formulas that are very specific to someone's needs. They just were not specific to my needs. <laughs> And that is why like I would completely pass on these. So if you have the same taste and the same needs that I do in a foundation, maybe, maybe skip these. Another foundation that honestly, pretty much the same issue, except I think it has less coverage than the beauty pie, but like everybody raves about the Pat McGrath Labs foundation and I rave about everything else from Pat McGrath. I really do. I, I genuinely get so much joy and happiness out of using her products that she has me as a customer for life, but I hope she puts out a different foundation formula because this one just isn't for me. I tried it. I love this bottle. It's so pretty. So freaking pretty. Like she does such a good job with this stuff, but oh, it's, and it's a great match. It's light too. It's a really good match for me. It's just kind of matte. It dries out over the day. It's a little too thin and like, crackly and it just didn't, it just didn't work for me. And I got the hydrating primer and I like the hydrating primer, but you know, if that primer could make this work, it could make something else look, well, sublime. <laughs> this wasn't sublime for me. I do love her concealer though. All right. <laughs> now I was, I think very fair <laughs> in my Tom Ford, like, is it worth it video? I really, really tried to account for the people who think that this is a ridiculously stupid amount of money to spend on anything. And the people who truly get joy out of buying themselves something nice and interacting with it every day, because both of those people deserve to be included. Everybody has different things that thrill them. And I just wanted to take into account, I'm so sorry if my microphone is picking up me brushing up against this box. I just really wanted to take into account the performance within the context of what I would consider to be like an over the top luxury price tag. While I do enjoy a lot of the Tom Ford products that I did buy, because I still stinking reach for this foundation stick all the time. I'm wearing it right now. I like it so much. Oh no, I have pecan pie in my teeth. Why didn't you guys tell me? That's work from home life. Okay, well, anyway, it's pecan pie. These two just didn't really stack up for me. I am very interested, even though I'm totally in over my head, on the other eyeshadow palettes, the one where you can use a wet brush and they paint on like magic. Granted, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world, but it's definitely unique and fun to use. But this one, the eye color quad in naked pink that isn't the wet to dry formula, it is ugh, drugstore at best. With the exception of the Celestial, we love a Celestial, but like it's not undupable at this point. And it's just four pans of just pretty underwhelming eyeshadow. Like I'm gonna use it because I have it, but don't go to watch my on this. Like there's nothing really special about it. And I don't feel like it makes me feel special. It's not eye champagne and it is the price of eye champagne. And then the blush, while very, very pretty, I still think that it is Carmine that does this. I'm not going to recommend any, anybody spend nearly $100 on a blush, especially when it isn't perfect. It leaves little red speckles on my face over the course of the day and it frustrates the crap out of me. Am I willing to put up with it? Yeah, you know, it's pretty enough, but there are other blushes that, I mean, you know, go and spend that amount of money on a set. I think she sells them basically for that price. A trio of the Pat McGrath Divine Blushes and you will be so much happier and you'll have your druthers in terms of what colors you want. I mean, they are just an absolute unmitigated pleasure. They are so much fun to put on and I have no complaints about them whatsoever. Whereas this is just not, it's just not the luxury experience that you're paying for. For this amount of money, it needs to be perfect, okay? And it's not perfect. I wanna to touch on something so that we can all have a little kumbaya moment. We can all commiserate together. This is not a fail because the product is a fail. It's a fail because they stinking discontinued them. And they were limited edition to begin with. We all knew what we were getting ourselves into. But nonetheless, I really, really hope that Bare Minerals brings back the bronzers. Wow, khaki first take next summer or spring. And I hope that they expand the shade range because this formula was knock it out of the park gorgeous. I ended up buying all three of them. I loved them. They are the perfect. Oh, they're so soft and gorgeous. They're all, they feel like almost like an eyeshadow. I mean, look at that. That is 
as pretty as anything in that Tom Ford eyeshadow palette and I feel like it's easier to work with and it's, you know, a whole pan of blushy, bronzy gorgeousness. They did make some really, really beautiful shades in it, but for that formula, I would love to see it go a little bit cooler toned. I would love to see it go a little bit richer, plummier, deeper. And I think that they should run with that formula instead of discontinuing it. Hopefully they're just wetting our appetites. I don't know if that's something that Bare Minerals does. They don't really play games, you know? They're not usually like, ooh, we're gonna dangle the carrot and we're gonna take it away, you know? They're not about gimmicks, but like, I need that back. We all need it back, okay? Like, it was an important milestone in makeup this year and Bare Minerals needs to bring the bronzers back. Okay. A product in here, actually there are two products in here that I haven't reviewed, like I haven't made videos on, but I'm gonna go ahead and spoil how I feel about them. So the excitement to reality quotient on these is an enormous margin. <laughs> these are the Chanel Le Beige blush sticks. Yeah, I have number 21 and number 24, and I bought these when I went on that spontaneous <laughs> Chanel binge at, at, uh, at Ulta when I was, you know, under the influence of NyQuil, DayQuil, DayQuil. Um, but anyway, wow. Mm, these just ain't it. They don't... <sighs> I can't figure out what it is about them. It's like they don't have any complexity. I think that that's the main thing is they are just very flat colors. And when you try and layer them on top of foundation, they get really, really like for me, white or any, like they mix with your complexion product and they just get really chalky and the color is very unnatural. There's nothing warm up to your skin, blend in, sink in, give you kind of some luxury velveteen anything. It doesn't want to commit one way or the other to a texture that makes sense. You know, it's not matte, it's not dewy, it's it's not really anything. And then it just really, I mean, it really just sits on top of the skin. That's all it wants to do. I have tried so many different ways to apply these, but look at the way that they blend out. It looks like kid makeup. You know how it's just like one color? It's just one flat color and they don't layer very well. And it's almost like this fluorescent stain on your cheeks, it's very, very unnatural looking and they're really, really hard to use. And they're, they're not inexpensive Chanel, so I did end up really enjoying a lot of the stuff that I bought from Chanel and that video is still forthcoming. But since there are going to be more eyes on this video than usual, I just wanted to let you guys know, shy away from these if you were excited about them. And while we're talking about disappointing blushes, I know that this, I mean, this was not a total, a total loss, right? They're not the worst thing in the world, but for $42, this is the Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh. I have the shade Major right here. I also got Mini Skirt. It's actually a much better formula than the Chanel. Like, let me be totally honest. But it's not my favorite, just because the pigmentation for the amount of product you're putting on your skin is a little disappointing, especially for something that is going to be this expensive for this kind of precious amount of product. I needed it to behave more like a luxury product. And like, I know, I always say, pigmentation doesn't always equal luxury, but I still needed a little bit more from this. It kind of just blends away. And I'm a blush queen. I really, really like to layer my blush. And I found that by the time I had built enough of it and really manipulated it to what I wanted it to be on my skin, I had disturbed whatever was around it or underneath it so much that it was just a pain in the neck. It just wasn't a fun product to use. And that is my rubric. Is it easy? Is it fun? It wasn't easy and it wasn't fun. It was not a reward product to use and so it was a pass for me because I don't want my friend spending $42 on something if they have the same expectations that I do from a blush. Bottom line. Another thing that is not terrible but I just don't recommend it because it just had too many shortcomings and that is all these Glossier monochromes. If you didn't watch this video you know let me go ahead and summarize for you. It is three pans in a four pan system, which every earth sign, Libra, Pisces, and Gemini is screaming about, okay? It doesn't keep me up at night, but I could see how it would. State of Kate did a phenomenal job of comparing these. Actually, so did Hannah Louise Poston, where they were just like, once you get these on the eye, the two of the three behave almost identically. And I think that that was huge. There's no difference in saturation and there's no difference in 
actual lightness or depth in any of these. And so you're really only relying on texture in order to manipulate light. I am passionate about using shadow and light to create illusion that flatters or that you can use to create whatever you're trying to create with your face with makeup. But this really just feels like having like one and a half arms tied behind my back because I have three textures of the same color, which I know is the idea, but I think I was just hoping for more. I ended up buying three of these, I think, and they just disappointed me. And the formulas aren't terrible, but I really found that as I was combining them and making eye looks that I found to be satisfactory or even, or even pretty, I was basically just recreating the Aether, the new Rose Quartz palette was all I was doing. And those shadows, for their lightness and color are far higher quality and far more saturated than these and much easier to blend. So yeah, I would skip these if you were kind of thinking about it. I mean, Aether does some gorgeous quads that have a lot of this similar mentality to them. They're $25, you can get 20% off down below and they're going to build eye looks, <laughs> you know? Like this is her new one. This is the rose quartz that has textures, that has light and depth. It is just all together like a better conceived, better executed, more satisfying, more useful, more versatile little quad. So yeah. Uh. <sighs> all right, another product that as I used it, I became less and less excited about it. Hannah does these really great updates like, do I still feel certain ways about, especially about expensive products? Because it's like, look, you deserve that. We all deserve that. You're always going to learn more and more and more about a product the more times you use it. Just because you learn about a product after using it in a review does not mean necessarily that the review is premature. So this was me diving back into what I remembered as the wonderful world of NARS blushes at Ulta because they did this special edition. It was two palettes. There was one that was deeper and then this one's sort of fairer. And this is called the Basic Instincts One and it has Orgasm, Orgasm X, Behave, and Dolce Vita. Truly shades that I remembered loving and these two shades look like they're going to just be my ideal shade, don't they? I love a really good pale lavender. I love my cool tones. Guys, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong here, but like, it's like they put a worse version of this formula in this palette. It's it's just not right. Like they're not, they're not NARS blushes as I remember them. Like I cannot, for the freaking life of me, break through the pan on this light one. God, I mean, it's just, it's just hard pan city. It like, won't, do you see that? I'm just trying to like wipe the pan. I've used this maybe three or four times outside of that video. And I mean, all of these are just like frustratingly, they seem to be lower quality than a regular NARS blush. And I just haven't reached for it for that reason. It's an extremely frustrating little palette, especially if they're going to be such stubborn pans, the mattes, to have the pan size be so small, you know? It's like I can't get a brush in there and like dig around the way that I'm supposed to. This is freaking aggravating. Like I've never seen something hard pan like that and like refuse, refuse to wipe off. Like I'm coming at this with a towel and it just keeps getting worse. This thing frustrated the snot out of me. So yeah, big disappointment. Another one that I did not make a full video about, mainly because I don't like to just like make entire videos just trashing a small brand that only has a couple of products. It's just not something that I like to do. Iris and Romeo, I kind of am on their like whatever their version of a PR list is. They don't put out a ton of products. So they sent me this. This is their brow up in medium brown. And I really wanted to like this. This is a really, you know, nice, concise little uh, brush, little brow product here. It's even a nice color, but it's just too mucky and it doesn't really want to like dry down and it's too pigmented for me. It was just a skip It was real oily, like real oily, greasy. Reminded me a little bit of the Say Beauty 
brow product, except that one didn't dry down at all. But this one just kind of, I mean, it just stays tacky for ages and ages and ages, which has the potential to truly ruin a makeup look if you're not expecting it. So yeah, it just needs to kind of go back to the drawing board store. I appreciate them sending it, but it didn't do it for me, especially with all of the amazing brow products that I've discovered this year. <laughs> Very quickly, I'm not going to belabor this because we've talked about this extensively. This is another one where it's like, don't spend your money on this. This thing is like $70. It's ridiculous. It is the Real Skin Plus Eye and Face Stick from Shantikai. They have some absolutely gorgeous complexion products. This one I don't like. It is just a very basic cream complexion stick with a pretty abysmal shade range and it just doesn't perform. It gets crackly underneath my eyes. It has not very long wearing. It doesn't even really look that great right when you put it on. And I would just, I would just skip it. It's very missable. But I just went off at length about this in another video so I'm not going to like beat a dead horse but yeah, it's just not worth it. Another thing that I think is completely not worth it. I think that this is kind of, the subtext is a lot of products where I really like a lot of things from the brand, but the brand kind of tried to round out their repertoire and they put out things that were sort of companion products like the Victoria Beckham blush or that one from Iris and Romeo where it just wasn't the star product that their previous products had been or the things that people really, you know, were acclaimed from them. So that's the same thing with this Refi blush. Do I love the Refi brow products? <laughs> yes, I do. I mainly love her brow pencil. I never thought that I would think a brow pencil was special, but her brow pencil is special. This is one of her blushes. This is in Malaya. I did the math on this. This is like one of the most expensive blushes pound for pound, even though it's only like $22 or something. It's like the size of an eyeshadow. Okay, this is just, it's just silly. This to me says, I didn't really care. I just put out a blush. <laughs> And I like Jess Hunt. I like her feed. I like her style. And I, I, her bronzers were enormous. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't really get it. I don't get why these were so tiny and precious. And as a blush lover, I feel personally victimized. <laughs> okay. And before, get out of here. Before I go through my feed and like touch on anything that jumps out at me, I want to discuss a few mascaras that really disappointed me. One, Kier Weiss. This is a very underwhelming mascara, especially for the price. Kirois, I really feel like they do such a good job with color and they do such a good job with their cream blushes that some of this other stuff just kind of feels like an afterthought and that's how this feels. It just kind of feels like an afterthought. It doesn't really build volume, it's not my preference, and it did smudge on me and for that reason, I felt like especially when they have the nerve to charge what they charge for something like this, it should not smudge. That's all. And it's organic. I would, I would love to be able to recommend an organic mascara, but like I can't make myself like something just because of like the feel good properties. The next, the coast is the big clean. They went to all the trouble to reformulate this because everybody said that the first formula smudged. I feel like this one smudges more than the first formula. I'm sorry, you guys know. I love so many things from Kosas, okay? I really feel like they do such a good job with so many things. But this was such a disappointment, especially because it is so pretty. It builds so much gorgeous matte black volume, but I mean, it smudges like right now. It, sm it smudges so much and it makes me crazy. There are some very, very, very good non-tubing mascaras that do not smudge and I will be sharing them with you in my best of the best video, which will be the next one. But uh, yeah, this isn't it. And then, talk about personally victimized. This is the Stila Stay All Day Mascara in Intense Black. This actually claims to be a tubing mascara and it's not. It smudges and it gives you raccoon eyes and it's just a basic, not very good mascara. And I found it to be very frustrating. So yeah, for all of my wanting to bring Stila back into the limelight on my channel, I was like, you know what? No one talks about this, this brand because they don't do particularly exciting things, but maybe they're like a Clinique or a Bare Minerals where they're just making reliable products that everybody wishes that we talked about more. Well, you know what, Stila? This one didn't cut it, okay? I am a tubing mascara aficionado. By the way, I am going to order the new one. I cannot remember the brand name, but you guys have messaged me about it a lot. It's, it's uh, Sephora. Very, very excited about it. But um, yeah, it was sad. Sad. 
This was very sad, like extra sad for me. Okay, let's go through my feed. Starting at the beginning of the year, let's. Oh, oh my God. I tried to do Project Pan in the beginning of this year. What a naive person I was. Wow, so many things. You know, I should count my blessings because there were a lot of things that I truly loved this year and totally knocked it out of the park. I did not like the Rare Beauty melting blushes. Those were not my favorite, mainly just because they were difficult to control and had too much silicone in them and they gave me this just like icky texture. They gave me the hoose bumps. I did not like the LYS foundation. I just don't think it was made for my skin, but I've heard really great things, but I can't give you guys a recommendation on that. Like what it even dupes for. Cause I couldn't even get it to like spread on my skin. It was just not made for me. Oh, Amela Beauty. I decluttered all of those, but wow, those were a massive fail. I knew that there were reasons that I needed to scroll back through this. Amela made these absolutely gorgeous nine pan shadows, and I have not heard squat from them since. I won a giveaway on Instagram where they sent me pretty much everything that they made at the time. And I just couldn't believe how frustrating those eyeshadow palettes were. Like the, the mattes didn't really blend the shimmers and the, the satins and they were supposed, they just looked so delicious, you know? And when they went on the eye, it was just kind of, eh. and they had zero wear time, none whatsoever. It was like, they just didn't stick. The milk makeup, the eye chalks, not good, not good. The color chalks, I, I decluttered those, I believe, unless they're just racking around in the bottom of my eyeshadow drawer right now, which who would know? Because there are these teeny tiny precious overpriced things that uh, I just, I felt like were really, really silly. I also would not recommend their sunshine What's it called? Sunshine tint. I found it to be incredibly frustrating. The delivery system is terrible. It's super overpriced. And I don't think that their like eco claims are anywhere near true. Not getting on milk makeups. PR list anytime soon. The Rowan shimmery lip glosses. I decluttered those because they weren't shimmery. You make a claim. I'm going to need you to stick to the claim. Okay. Rowan got re-owned essentially you know the founder Nikki DeRoast did end up getting pushed out and I just feel like the brand has been iterating on itself and uh, spinning its wheels ever since and they're not terrible products but I'm just not impressed oh ha 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 Violette <laughs> how to tick off the most people in my comments all at once. I just thought that the, I love Violette. I love her. I just thought that her makeup release was super frustrating and difficult to use. And a lot of people got on me in that video because they were like, those products aren't supposed to go together. You're not supposed to wear a red lip with a sparkly eye or whatever. I'm like, it was not a tutorial. It was a review. I was trying to apply as many products to my face as I could for the sake of demonstration. And I didn't like any of them. Okay, I stand by my thoughts on that. Nabla, another one that I decluttered. Nabla's eyeshadows are so beautiful in the pan, but again, they just don't stick and there's no wear time. And their foundation, the Realist, uh, Skin Realist foundation never dried down. It was very, very pretty, but like it just felt like molten lava on my face all day. And it was very disappointing. The Rowan little balms in the, the crank up balms, what were they called? The Elixir Tinted Lip Oil Balms. They just broke off in the tube. I feel like it was just a poor delivery system and they did not make clear in the description of those balms that they were mood color changing, which only turns hot pink. So I refuse to buy those kinds of formulas because I think that they're a gimmick and they don't look good on me. They really look good on people who can wear hot pink or things with hot pink undertones, like make that clear. But the fact that someone in my comments had to be like, well, red, five, Red Lake five, or some some color ingredient that that person had to go and hunt through their ingredient list. She's like, that's the color changing red or whatever, that particular ingredient. And I was like, I shouldn't have to rely on you to go and read the in ingredients to know that like it should say it. It was, it was frustrating and they were so expensive. <laughs> yeah, guys, I think that that's it for this year's fails. And more than anything, I just hope that this was a good recap or a refresher or a condensed summary of the year and what I would have passed on. Hopefully that saves you money, especially if you're new here and you didn't go back and watch all of my old videos. <laughs> I've 
<laughs> I forgive you. I really want to make new people feel welcome too. And to be able to give you guys these milestones, these kind of like touch points, mid-year and end of the year to let you know like what I don't recommend and why with absolutely no like shade one way or the other. Most of these are brands that I will absolutely buy from in the future. These just happen to be products that disappointed me for one reason or another. And hopefully I have managed to, again, couch that in enough context that you guys understand where I'm coming from, even if something is appealing to you that wasn't appealing to me. So yeah, guys, thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for spending the year with me. I will thank you again at the end of the next video, probably. But yeah, guys, uh, the next one's going to be massively long because for as few, I feel very lucky, as few fails as there have been this year, there have been some total mind-blowing, knock it out of the park, gorgeous formulas that I have tried this year. I did not even realize that they were all within this year until I started scrolling back in my feed and I was like, that was this year? Oh my God. There's just been so much great stuff. So yeah, if you did find this valuable, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel and you're not already subscribed, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below. Join us, we have a lot of fun here and uh, thank you guys for watching. I love you very, very much, and I will see you at the end of the year best of the best favorites. Bye. <laughs>